A blizzard may be hitting the U.S. next week. Here are the details. A blizzard could form in the U.S. between January 15th and January 18th, according to forecast models on the Tropical Tidbits Simulator, with the Global Forecast System and the European Center for Medium-Range Weather Forecasts suggesting a low-pressure system will pass through the U.S.'s southeast coast on Sunday, before moving up the mid-Atlantic coast on Monday. Low and high pressure exerted by Earth's atmosphere cause changes in weather, with air naturally wanting to flow from high pressure to low pressure, according to the UK Met Office. According to Sciencing.com, in a blizzard, cold air from the north and warm air from the south move toward the low pressure. Subsequently, the cold air is forced under the lighter warm air, which in turn cools and releases its moisture. As that moisture drops through the cold air, it freezes and falls as snow. The clash between the storm's low pressure and the high pressure beyond it creates the strong wind. A blizzard can ultimately occur if temperatures are below freezing at ground level and in the clouds, and there is enough moisture in the air to allow clouds and snow to form. Blizzards are defined by the National Weather Service as severe snowstorms that last for at least three hours, with snow that reduces visibility to under a quarter of a mile, and winds above 35 miles or 56 kilometers per hour. The consequences of such extreme weather are well known, with a number of freakish snow incidents occurring over the past few years. In 2015, for instance, Delta Flight 1086 departed from Atlanta and was scheduled to land at New York's LaGuardia Airport at 11.10 a.m. It was snowing at the time MD-80 aircraft approached runway 13. As the plane touched down, it skidded off the runway and crashed into a fence, forcing passengers to evacuate the aircraft from emergency exits and slides. Then there was the woman in 2015 who got trapped in a snowbank on her way home from work. After the car was completely buried by a passing snowplow, the woman listened to advice from her daughter to clear the snow away from her exhaust pipe so she didn't die from carbon monoxide poisoning. However, as the hours ticked by and her phone died, and cold and wet from digging, she wrote goodbye letters to her daughters. The woman then stood in the window frame of her car and waved for help with the tip of a red snowbrush. As all looked lost, 13 hours after she became stuck, a man spotted the snowbrush and shoveled her out of her snow-covered coffin. The Kentucky tornadoes may be a part of a new trend caused by man-made climate change's impact on the jet stream. Here is what you need to know. The areas in which tornadoes are occurring most often is changing, and it could be because of climate change, according to CNN, who spoke to tornado expert Victor Gensini in the wake of the catastrophic tornadoes that killed at least 80 people in Kentucky last week. Over the past four decades, tornado frequency has been decreasing in parts of the central and southern Great Plains, known as Tornado Alley, while increasing in more heavily populated states east of the Mississippi River. Tornadoes are primarily fueled by warm, moist air from strong winds that shift direction as they rise up, and this could be affected by climate change because the jet stream, air currents in the upper atmosphere that influence weather patterns, is known to be affected by rises in greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere. The changing jet stream has long been linked to other problematic weather phenomena with, for instance, the polar vortex unleashing frigid temperatures and rare snow on parts of the northeast United States and Canada over Mother's Day weekend last year. The polar vortex is a band of low-pressure Arctic air located in the middle and upper tropospheres and extends into the stratosphere, but it is held in place by the jet stream and as such disturbances can push frigid wintry air to parts of Canada and the US, while high pressure systems of warmer air bulge northwards elsewhere. The freezing temperatures that hit Texas in February were also attributed to the same phenomena. However, conversely, so was record-breaking heat in the lower 48 states of the US for November and December, as well as record-breaking autumn rainfall in the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia. There, the Washington Post reported strange warm weather in the U.S. had been caused by a stuck polar vortex, explaining that the polar vortex steers storms and usually changes its shape and position, but scientists said it's been stuck in one place for an unusually long time. And that's why the U.S. has been having such strangely warm weather over November and the beginning of December. Such significant impacts on weather patterns means that the jet stream is an area of significant focus for climate scientists trying to predict what it will do next. And in September, a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences warned the planet's northernmost wind tunnel, called the North Atlantic Jet Stream, will start migrating northward if the Earth keeps warming up. This would impact North America and Europe in the form of more severe flooding, droughts, and heat waves. 
They explained that the jet stream's band of fast-moving air is created by the difference in pressure between cold Arctic air and warmer air to the south. As such, the study's researchers bored deep holes in the Greenland ice sheet and looked at the way snow layers have been deposited over the past 1,250 years. From this, they calculated the past positions and intensity of the powerful air current, and said that while the current fluctuations in the jet stream's position and intensity are still within historic bounds, their calculations indicate that the weather-controlling air current would migrate northward by 2060 if greenhouse emissions continue at the current pace. The BBC reports that a new study in the journal Nature Geoscience argues that if the planet's average temperature keeps rising, hurricanes and typhoons will start to move farther northward and southward, entering the world's most populated areas. This means that cities like New York, Boston, Beijing, and Tokyo would eventually start to experience these extreme storms on a regular basis. Researchers say the reason for this is because global warming will eventually decrease the temperature difference between the cold polar regions and the hot tropical regions. It is this temperature difference that forms Earth Earth's jet streams, which are high-altitude currents of fast-moving air that separate the two systems and keep cyclones close to the tropics. Scientists predict that global warming will cause this crucial temperature difference to decrease and thereby reduce jet stream activity, and perhaps even cause the jet streams to fade away. This effect would cause cyclones to push farther north than ever before, slamming into big cities in the northern hemisphere. A severe heat wave affecting 40 million Americans has seen temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit beat records in Wyoming, Utah, Arizona, and Southern California, according to NBC News. It has two main causes, according to the Associated Press. First, a heat dome, or area of high pressure. Sinking air from the Earth's atmosphere prevents air near the ground from rising. That sinking air operates like a cap, trapping warm ground air in place, according to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Without rising air, there is also no rain, and nothing to stop hot air from becoming hotter. That high pressure works in combination with a two-decade dry spell that has sucked moisture out of soil in much of the western United States. Usually, some of the sun's heat evaporates moisture in the soil, but according to the Associated Press, scientists say the western soil is now so dry that the energy is instead used to make the air even warmer. As a consequence of the extreme heat, at least 14 new wildfires broke out this week in Montana and Wyoming alone. Firefighters also fought fires in Arizona and New Mexico, with U.S. Department of Agriculture meteorologist Gina Palma saying these were certainly conditions that we would not normally see in June. Power networks across the country have also been strained due to increased use of air conditioning, according to Reuters. Operators in California asked homeowners across the state to conserve energy in the late afternoon and evening when demand surges. In graphs published on its website, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency showed that heat waves like this are almost three times as frequent as they were in the 1960s, increasing steadily for over 60 years. Furthermore, the duration of these heat waves is now almost a full day longer. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.